look, honestly, if you pull up a mastering session and it already sounds good and you cannot make it possibly any better, that song has still been mastered even though you did nothing to it. That is the mastering process. So I've seen a lot of people out there that think putting plugins on their mix bus is mastering and they're asking questions like, what is your go-to mastering chain when it's literally in their mixing session? I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> nah, I probably shouldn't say that. I'm gonna tell you why this is wrong and why mix bus processing is not mastering. I'm gonna tell you what you should be doing if you want to master your own tracks. So when you're putting plugins on your mix bus, you are doing mix bus processing. Now, what's the difference? Let me tell you. <laughs> Shouldn't have winked. I'm coming into this video with some really weird energy today, so I apologize. So what is the mix bus? The mix bus is the channel that all audio flows through in your mixing session. So your drums, bass, guitar, vocals, effects, they all go through one channel. That is the mix bus. Some doors actually call it the master bus, but it's still not mastering. Plugins on this are used for global frequency manipulation, uh, compression, tonal shaping with saturation and tape and that kind of thing. Just general moves to the entire mix. And a point worth mentioning is top-down mixing is a very popular approach these days. And that's when you kind of get a rough balance just using the faders and panning. And then you start with your mix bus. So you do kind of broad moves to get it in a place where you want to be quicker. Now with mix bus processing and mixing, it is your job to get it to sound as good as you can. And once it does sound as good as you can make it, then export it and then this is when we move on to the mastering stage. Ideally you would send it to a professional mastering engineer. It's because they have a professional opinion, uh, you can only listen to a mix for the first time once and that's really crucial getting a third person's opinion in a professional environment to work on your music. Shameless plug, I know, I know, but let's move on. Now, if you insist on mastering your own mixes or just don't have the budget or you don't want to send it to someone else, then you need to take off your mixing hat, maybe wait an hour or a couple of days and then put on your mastering hat. The difference between mixing and mastering besides the technical processes is a mindset shift as well as what your goals and outcomes of the process is. I recommend you make a new session for mastering. This will tidy up your workflow, help you switch minds better into a mastering mindset and just basically stop you tweaking your mix endlessly because there's so many options. Mastering doesn't start, this might be controversial, but mastering doesn't start until you just have a stereo file or stems if you're doing stem mastering, but that's a different topic. Making a new session and just working on a stereo file helped me immensely when I was first starting. It really restricts you in a good way so you can really put on your mastering hat and then do mastering decisions rather than doing continuous mixing decisions. Now, how is this different to mastering? Like you might ask, you're still processing the channel that all the audio goes through regardless. As I said, you need to approach it with a different mindset and it's a different outcome or goal. Mastering processing is the last stage of the production process and the first stage of delivery. And it's at this point that you need to get your music competitive with other commercially released songs. You need to make further improvements on the mix if you can. And look, honestly, if you pull up a mastering session and it already sounds good and you cannot make it possibly any better, that song has still been mastered even though you did nothing to it. That is the mastering process. And finally for delivery, you need to make sure it's an acceptable loudness for different mediums. So CDs have to be competitive for streaming services. It has to sound good once it's encoded and normalized. I have a few other videos on that if you wanna check that out. To ensure it's competitive, I recommend using reference tracks and you can check out my last video that I did on that. I'll bloop the card here, I think I can do. And that's it for today. I just thought I'd outline the difference between what mix bus processing and mastering is. They are different. In both, you still might use compression or EQ or, you know, tape or coloring effects, but the mindset and the goals that you're trying to achieve in both processes are different. Question of the day, do you master your own tracks? Uh, what are your thoughts on doing that? Have you been successful in doing that? And I'd love to hear your mastering process if you do that. If you enjoyed the video, please like it because it helps my videos be seen by more people. And you know what I always say? Use your ears.